Smile Direct Club is set to begin trading on the NASDAQ in just a few hours. Joining us right now with his expectations for that and the rest of the IPO uh, market. A lot of deals slated for this fall. John Elton, partner at Graycroft. And we should mention that Graycroft is invested in the Wii Company and the Real Real. So John cannot comment directly on either of those companies. John, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Um, so obviously, this Smile Direct deal uh, has come out. We expect others to price relatively soon. Um, <laughs> So clearly the IPO market as a whole remains open, even if it's maybe kind of discriminating, because we all know about some companies that are deciding whether they can get the valuation they want. So <laughs> what's the general tone for you, and what's the formula for when a deal in this environment is going to work? Well, you're seeing a variety of companies that are going public today. Um, Smile Direct Club is obviously in the healthcare. care. Um, you, you have companies like Datadog, which are much more uh, technical. And I would say in, in overall, it's just great to see a relatively healthy IPO market. People are scouring each individual name and, and having tough questions. But overall, there's an optimism that these companies are getting public. It's good for our country. It's good for investors. Um, so I think in, in general, it's a positive uh, environment. Has it not been um, a little bit of a collision of you know, here's what kind of Silicon Valley venture capital world thinks these companies are worth and then the public market saying yes or no. Um, I'm just kind of wondering if there's a rethink going on or if it's strictly kind of business by business. I think all of this is very name by name. But yes, I think there is a, you know, you keep hearing about the latest private equity round and then the IPO. And if there's a discrepancy between uh, those pricing, you know, it's kind of friction. Um, you know, year, years ago, I joked that, you know, the IPOs were the new down round. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, luckily, we're not seeing that anymore, um, although in individual names that can happen. But I think, again, overall, while, you know, in one name it might go down, one name it sure. might go up, I think it's a healthy thing. It's good for private investors. It's good for public investors. Um, so I, so I think there's not the same healthy. momentum to try and push up valuation rounds privately because it's going to lead to embarrassment. And if you're the the ones pushing it up, you're going to well, look, you're going to have egg on your face once this actually comes to a to an exit strategy in the form of an IPO. I mean, for us, and we want to build long-term healthy companies that are mm -hmm. sustainable. And when we're investing, there's no concept of pushing the valuation up. That's not right. good for us. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and if you want to build long-term enduring companies, they have to do well in public markets. We're proud of that. That's something that we care about. We care about even when companies get acquired by other companies. Um, so, you know, anytime I hear this, like, oh, the VCs are trying to get out and whatever, we're locked up, too. In, yeah, but in the, but yeah. there, there, am, am I wrong to think that there was this momentum that was out there that if you didn't do a deal at a price, somebody else would, and maybe that's died down to some extent? There I would aren't say, as many oh, bad actors pushing things up? I mean, this, again, this isn't unique to private markets. The, the, I would say the tone in, in, in general in the economy today is, is a little bit more muted. There's, mm -hmm. you know, the trade question, which we talked about last time. I think that could flip to the positive. But now it's those kinds of things are weighing on the general economy. That's affecting valuations in private world. That's affecting valuations in, in uh, the public world. Um, there, I think in late stage you know, pre-IPO rounds, I would imagine those are much more difficult conversations today. Right. Um, the rule has been in terms of how the IPOs have performed and what the market really latches onto is the more a company looks like pure software, the, the better the, the market seems to like it. If it's a, if it's a little more of a kind of hardware, a consumer play like Smile Direct, I mean, I think that you could say this is a, this is a great brand or franchise. We just don't know how big the market's going to be. We don't know how it scales. Um, does that make sense? At this point, and, and I think it kind of bears on Peloton too. How much of it is a technology company? How much of it is not? Yeah, I, you know, you know, technology uh, is uh, software businesses are are interesting. They're high margin, recurring businesses that have a lot of scale. Datadog is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's two French founders here in New York. You know, with three New York IPOs with Peloton, We, and Datadog. Um, so we're kind of having a moment in New York, which is really exciting. But that's a perfect example of a software company. You see it in the financials. It's got incredible leverage. Uh, the founders have built a really uh, incredible company. And Peloton, you know, is interesting because you're right. Like, it combines some software. It combines media. It combines hardware. And I think what we're seeing now is that uh, innovation is spreading into areas. Because a lot of, like, the things that you think software were disruptive have been disrupted at this point, mm -hmm. And now it's seeping into other areas. You know, the macro on that is that... Um, 
you know, working out has become the new religion. You know, religion in, in general is on the decline, and, and working out is massive up, uptick as people are, are trying to live healthier lives. And you're seeing that in Peloton's number also. You, you have, I, I think, w the interesting analog between Peloton and software is you have a membership. I think their retention rates are in the mid-90s, where people are, are use, their usage rates are, are healthy. So people love it. They're subscribing. It has software-like elements. I think they're the apple of the category. Mm -hmm. I, I own one of the bikes. It's a, it's a really well-designed bike. The software is, the UI is great. And that kind of stuff is subtle, but it's very difficult to disrupt. There's lots of bikes out there, but there have been lots of bikes out there ever since they started. Right. You know, John Foley's, uh, you know, the founder, he's still very involved. I think he's going to continue pushing innovation. They, they rolled out this treadmill. I've tried the treadmill. It's an incredible, it's the best treadmill that you will ever be on. Really? Um, so I, I think Peloton's an interesting, unique animal. Um, that has kind of those crossover elements. All right, so the Apple category meaning higher price, but lots of loyalty and, and good user experience. Yeah, and the bulk of profits yeah. generally go to the premium brand in the space. In Smile Direct, we're in sort of the premium company, a company called Candid, right. um, that only uses orthodontists. One of the things that Smile Direct has been, you know, ha had yeah, issues it's been on. one of the questions about that. And, about and so we've Direct sort of taken a different approach, have a higher end product. Um, and I think with Peloton and Candid and, and those kinds of companies, if you have a premium brand, I think the bulk of profits, just like Apple has it in the smartphone category. John, thanks a lot.